Well, if you're one of the people up in the early hours watching the World Cup, you witnessed some of the world's best athletes at the peak of their performance. What is it that allows some human beings to reach the most elite levels of sports and performing arts? Why do some people choke? Why do some become accomplished but never brilliant? And are humans born with talents that make them particularly suited to certain pursuits? Matthew Side is a former world-class table tennis player and journalist. He's the author of a book called Bounce, How Champions Are Made, and he joined me from London. Matthew Side, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me on. In people who become highly successful at something, world-class in fact, what weight do you give innate talent versus hard work and opportunity? I give innate talent almost no weight at all. And that's a controversial view, and I know it's a, a radical and rather subversive view, but I think the evidence backs up that assertion. If you dig down into the narrative histories of anyone who has reached a high level in virtually any task with a certain level of complexity, what you find is they have spent many, many hours, many months, many years building up to that level. There is no shortcut, even if sometimes we look at young performers and it seems as if they've short-circuited that long road to excellence. When you actually find out about what they did, you find that they started super young. Tiger Woods is a two-year-old, the Williams sisters are three-year-olds, Mozart, who was dazzling the aristocracy with his piano skills at six and a half. His most eminent biographer assesses that he had already practiced three and a half thousand hours. The process of ingraining excellence is long-term, but what the evidence suggests is that almost all of us who are healthy have the potential to get there, provided we're willing to stick at it for all those many hours. But I'm five foot nine, so I could do all the hard work in the world and I will not be a prima ballerina because my body type doesn't suit that. Well, there are certain hardware issues that are significant in certain activities. So, for example, if you're very, very short, you're unlikely to become a top basketball player. And if you don't have sufficient number of fast twitch muscle fibres, you're not going to become the world's greatest sprinter. However, in virtually all the tasks characterised by, by what I describe as complexity, the limiting factor is not hardware, it is software. So, for example, Lionel Messi is not the greatest soccer player in the world because he's faster or stronger than everybody else. Federer is not the best tennis player in the world because he's faster or stronger. What they have is acquired mental representations that enable them to play in the most efficient way. So, for example, Lionel Messi can discern the pattern of players around him on a football pitch, which enables him to select the right pass in to an on-running teammate whilst avoiding the defence.